Back up, back up, back up, back up. Well, here we are, my friends, at another bittersweet end to a 21 Pilots little series thing that we got going on. But it ends with Lane Boy, what 21 Pilots started with on this channel. It's only fitting. Roll it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Ariano the Third. Dog is of the Third Family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you like what you see at the end of the video, consider becoming part of this little family by clicking the subscribe button bottom right hand corner. Now, like I said in the cold open to this video, we are on our final 21 Pilots and Mute Math session song. And it's only fitting and it's only right that the last song of this session's feature is the first song that I ever did of 21 Pilots, Lane Boy. So I'm pretty hyped about that and I'm hyped that it's the last song because there was a lot of anticipation for me at least building up to this. So I really don't have too much to say because I wanna get right on into it. So like I always say when I'm putting on these headphones, which happen to be Tyler's headphones, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at the third earnest, just like the channel says, no spaces. Links are down in the description below. And are y'all hype? Cause I'm hype. So let's just get it. What we think is good, I wasn't raised in the hood, but I know a thing or two about bang in darkness. Yo, it sounds like this is probably the song that sounds the most like the original so far, but that's fine because the original gets me fucking hyped. And this song sounds like, it sounds like it, but like in a more deconstructed, like it doesn't sound as polished, which is good because this song is a very gritty song. And like the lyrics fit the grittiness of this like sessions performance with that like really toned down. I don't even know what it is. Like that low synthesizer bass note, the way it sounds, damn, clean. Cause our minds change on what we think is good. I wasn't raised in the hood, but I know a thing or two about pain in darkness. If it wasn't for this music, I don't know how I would have bought this. Regardless, the, the echo? What? Yo, that was clean. Cause it hasn't been the whole song, but when it hits, it hits. I know a thing or two about pain and darkness, darkness, and then just the rest of the song echoes out. Ugh. Uh, dirty production. I wasn't raised in the hood, but I know a thing or two about pain in darkness. If it wasn't uh. for this music, I don't know how I would have bought this. Regardless, all these songs I'm hearing are so heartless. Don't trust a perfect person and don't trust this song is flawless. Honest, there's a few songs on this record that feel common. I'm in constant confrontation with what I want and what is popping in the industry. It seems to me that singles on the radio. This is definitely getting downloaded, even if I have to bootleg it. Well, I'ma thank Yeezy. And when I see that dude, I'ma thank him. I'ma buy the album, I'ma download that motherfucker, I'ma shoot a bootlegger. Yo, son, it's just like, just the deconstructedness of all these songs, especially this song, because this song sounds extra good because of like the swag and because of the grittiness of the original sound. Like it sounds extra good when you deconstruct it and you take away like certain elements so other elements stand out like the echoing of his voice, like this part right here, like Josh coming in on the drums. Doo, 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 Yo, I'm still amazed by the echo, much less them coming in with all this other shit. There's a few songs on this record that feel common. I'm in constant confrontation with what I want and what is popping in the industry. It seems to be that singles on the radio a currency. My creativity's on the pain when I play the show. Oh, that line is just so dope because especially like listening to the sessions version because he says my my creativity feels like it's only free when I'm playing shows and here we are playing a show or at least an internet show and the creativity is just flowing from everybody always gonna be a dope line always gonna be a bar Like a hazmat 
in a gas mask If you ask Zach, it's my brother, he likes when I rap fast But let's backtrack, back to this No would you live in that boy on that list But the problem is, there's another list that exists You know, really wants to think about this Big insanity, big salary Just that one little Bing! I can't even go that high Just that one little guitar note And it like sets the whole shit off you know, I would have been completely fine with that note not being there. But obviously he was like, nah, we need to put this hoe right here. And then the whole song just gets better because of one note. That's an artist that sees things the way that they need to be when the common person like myself, that's just something that we don't see. And this is something that I always tell people who criticize art, especially like, especially like gallery art, like fine art. For example, like the 32 canned soup by Andy Warhol. I think it's 32. I forgot the exact number, but just the canned soup, the Campbell's soup from Andy Warhol, it's like, why are those things so popular? Why are they so famous? And everybody's line is always, I could have done that. And then my line to them is always, but you didn't. You could have done that. And it's easy to duplicate and easy to replicate, but it's never easy to go out there and be original. Yeah, you could do it after the fact, seeing it. I could probably paint those Campbell suits too. Could I have thought of it first? The answer is no, because if I could have, I would have. And that's what goes through my mind whenever I hear that one stupid little guitar plug. Like no one but him would have thought to put that right there. Let's keep going. We're gonna have to listen to that little guitar plug again because obviously fire. In a gas mask, if you ask Zach, it's my brother, he likes when I rap fast. But let's backtrack, back to this. No, would you live in that boy on that list? But the problem is, there's another list that exists. You know, really want to think about this. Big insanity, big salary, big insanity, my morality. If you get in between to when I live in beef, you're gonna feel the heat of a cavalry. All these songs I'm hearing are so heartless. Don't trust a perfect person and don't trust a song that's flawless. They say, stay in your lane. Yo, do y'all just even realize how hard it is to do that like drum that drum pattern that he just did right there? That's what I'm so amazed with Josh about always is that like his drumming, he always tends to do like the off like the off tempo drumming where it's not where you would expect it to be. That shit is so hard to do. It's so hard to be off rhythm and on rhythm at the same time. Like listen to this. Back to this. Or would you live in that boy on that list? But the problem is, there's another list that exists. You know, really want to think about this big insanity, big salary, big insanity, my morality. If you get in between to when I live in beef, you're gonna really heat up a cavalry. All these songs I'm hearing. I can't even do that, like, or even think about it. He's the one thinking of the snare hits and the cymbal hits and the hi hats and the timing of everything. It's just crazy how like how drummers how drummers brains work and how pianist brains work. To be able to like hear do two different things and for the ability for your body to do those two different things simultaneously. Shit just blows my mind. All these songs I'm hearing are so heartless. Don't trust a perfect person and don't trust a song that's flawless. They say stay in your lane, boy. Lame boy. We go where we want to. They think this thing is a highway. It's always just those little things that always get me. Like the stupid like little guitar plucking, just the one note. And then the highway, highway. That like gets me pumped up for some reason, I don't know. It's like something so minute and so minuscule that it probably just goes and no one even thinks about it. But I'm over here like, oh shit, that was the hardest shit I've ever heard. rubbing my head like that. Same. And before I unpause it, it's funny that they take this sound and put it into their music or put it into this because that sound, that sound was like extremely popular in EDM and like big room house and big room, just hard what you would think of EDM music. That was always the sound that would like be on the rise and be on the rise up until the beat drop. <laughs> I 
forgot how hype this song is. The what would they be like tomorrow, but like with his singing voice and then like an echoed voice over here and then with like that deep, not demonic per se, but like that deep distorted vocal and all three of those together and then the music rests and then comes in. And if you're listening to this with headphones on, if you're not, you probably should, or you probably should hear this part because I just heard the music go, what would they be like tomorrow, like back and forth in my head. That shit is always dope when a producer, or when they produce like that. It's just those little things. God is in the details. <laughs> Just like super impressed with this dude who's going ham on the keyboard. I think that's the lead singer of the band. I'm just super impressed that he's able to keep this rhythm and keep that tempo the entire time without like breaking, without losing, without messing up. It's one thing to play like a lot of notes. It's one thing to play like all over the keyboard because it's easy to hear the melody, but it's another thing to just be hitting the same spot for like 45 seconds. That's impressive. <laughs> happening right here because I thought that that was in the song but the way that they ended the song and then whoever like is lighting the video whoever the DP is the director of photography they cut it out Psh, dope like right here ah that's dope the final scene in drumline or something right now he's just gonna go with the stick and then drop it on the drum watch nah he's not gonna do that but yo they're going ham <laughs> hype but like the way the camera's moving and the way whoever like is the director of the camera the, the camera operator the way they're moving the camera is exactly the way that i would feel like myself moving in real life if i was there like i don't know who to watch do i watch his hands do i watch his emotions like where am i going oh shit he's going ham oh but we're switching over here oh now we're watching over here like i just that's what i'm feeling right now the camera work is doing exactly what my eyes would be doing <laughs> Like I was doing something. My energy's up here right now.
And I finally figured out what the lighting setup reminded me of, especially right there when they started like playing them brighter. It reminded me of the video Faint by Linkin Park where they're like singing and they got it right there and then like they're backlit by all those lights. I think it's Faint. I'm like, I'm, I'm 100% sure it's Faint. But yeah, that whole just last part of musicality and musical ability. <sighs> I'm tired, but yeah. That was like the climactic ending that I was hoping for the entire song, like. Cause I knew that the end of the song, I knew like on the actual recording, like the studio recording, it goes hard at the very end, but that went hard and then it went harder. This whole little session was dope. I don't know which one I like better. If anything, I like them equally for different reasons. This is something where if I like wanna get hyped and I wanna listen to like more similar to the original sound of the song, but different at the same time. And I'm like in that vibe where I wanna get like, where I wanna get my energy up this is what I'm gonna listen to. But if I'm in the chill vibe, I'm in the chill mode and I wanna just like, I wanna be kicked back with it, then I'm gonna listen to the other sessions because they're way more chill than that. They're way more experimental. They're way, they're more like lo-fi style, like taking the songs and turning them into that. But either way, they're both dope. So people that said that they like this one more, I understand. And people that say that they like the other ones more, I understand. Which one do I like more? Yes. But yo, that brings us to the conclusion of our little sessions marathon that we went on. Did y'all enjoy it? I hope so, cause I enjoyed it. I enjoyed with y'all, even though we didn't watch at the same times, but you feel me, you get me. If you did enjoy it, please consider liking the video and leaving a comment down below, cause that stuff helps the algorithm catch the video and send it out there to other 21 Pilots fans, other Mute Math fans, other sessions, and just fans of music in general. If you liked what you saw enough and you liked like the commentary that I gave, because I normally give this type of commentary, consider becoming a subscriber and consider becoming part of the fam, because that's how we get down around here. They said I was a reaction channel when I talked talk too much and I need to stay in my lane, but I told him, nah, we go where we want to. You feel? Like I said at the beginning of the video, follow the social medias, links down in the description below. Follow the Discord, jump in the Discord. If you want to talk to me, that's always going to be the best place to do it because I'm in there almost every day from like 7 to 9.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. But that's pretty much it for today, guys. That's it for this little session that we did of 21 Pilots. More 21 Pilots to come in the future for sure. But as of right now, like I always say at the end of all of my videos, go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other, and I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.